Hey, today is two minutes tips and tricks. Yes, this is a section that I just came up with. No one in the team knows about this. And these videos get made in such an unorganized way. Look at my desk. Look at this mess. All right, let's get started. So today's topic is about how to mix the staccato strings. We're gonna talk about the, the three important things. One second. That's better, other than the beautiful curtain that I will be replacing, but at the moment it works fine. Today we're talking about the three most important things when it comes to mixing staccato strings. What do we need to do for the highest staccato strings like violins, violas? What do we need to do for the lowest staccato strings? Now the goal for this format is to go a little bit more straight to the point and give you the like sort of like, like the golden nugget or the bit of information. The tips and tricks that give you the fast result. But I'm not gonna talk about the theory that's behind that result, if that makes sense. So straight to the point. So maybe I should just stop with this intro. Thank you. So how to mix staccato strings, the three most important things. We're just gonna be talking about these two tracks, strings short high and the strings short low. We're gonna keep this super simple and straight to the point, but the same concept that we're gonna be talking for the short high staccato strings could apply for, let's say, staccato violins. And the same thing for the lower strings and cellos. So first thing, panning. Yes, these libraries have already been recorded in a way that they already sound where they should sound like, let's say, the violins one already sound a little bit to the left and the cello sound a little bit to the right, but still, for example, violins one, they already sound a little bit to the left, but still, move them a little bit farther that way. Follow me on this one, or watch yesterday's video where I talk about why we do those things. I'm not gonna spend more time here. So, for example, if this is left and this is right, and we've got, let's say, cellos, the cellos are going to sound predominantly here, kind of thing in this area. Still, you may want to close out the stereo panning a little bit and move that sound a little bit more towards this side. So just grab your panning knobs that are going to be open like this, left and right. This is the channel strip. <laughs> oh, man. So again, if you've got the channel strip here with the two panning knobs completely open, this one to the left, this one to the right, still you may want to close a little bit the left one a little bit towards the right side, maybe like 20%. Two things regarding this. One, don't go crazy, just a little bit subtle, it's orchestral music. Two, this is super easy, it doesn't require any plugin and it's super effective. So as you can see here, these are two tracks of high strings violins. This is left, this is right, this is left, this is right. I move the right side a little bit towards the left. It is still right, but a little bit towards the left. This one here is lower strings, the opposite thing. Lower strings generally will sound towards the right side. This is left, this is right. I move the left channel a little bit to the right. It's still left, but a little bit more towards the right. And I leave the right channel where it is. So quick example, real quick. We're just gonna hear these two tracks. I soloed these two tracks. And I'm gonna bypass the panning like this to all of them. This is active, this is not active. Active, bypassed. Subtle, but meaningful. I'm not gonna go more in depth because I talked about this yesterday. Watch that video more in depth. Just go watch that video. Two things. First, we're gonna we're gonna want to add a little bit of a sense of a bigger space, like a little bit of that symphonic kind of sound. So we're gonna add a little bit of reverb in a very specific manner. Not too much, just a little bit. It's still a staccato strings, and we wanna keep that aggression, and we don't wanna wash out and make it muddy. Oh, it's so muddy here. We're gonna add two reverbs, not just one. The first is going to be a convolution reverb. Just a tiny bit of that reverb, not too much because your sample already has that room component most likely if you use a library like uh, Cine Samples or Speedfire or something like this already been recorded in a big room with 
pharma exec adrenal that already has that room component but adding a little bit more it's gonna help creating that type of reverb that sounds cinematic and epic but again not too much so that's the first reverb a convolution reverb and on top of that reverb you're gonna add a digital algorithmic reverb something like a hull or something like that something that has a nice long even decay so without the reverb with the reverb Again, subtle but meaningful, and it adds up. So that's the first thing for the high staccato strings. The second thing that you may want to add is a little bit of brightness. Not always, but for something like this, an action cue or something like when you need to add a little bit of extra aggression to those staccatos, adding a little bit of brightness to the strings is going to help for that. Now, do not reach for the EQ right away and bring up the high frequencies. That's not the way you want to do it. Instead, Cut some of the low frequencies that may be masking those high frequencies. I'm gonna say this again. Do not bring up the high frequencies. Instead, find the low frequencies that are masking those high frequencies and bring them down a little bit. Like this EQ right here. See, I cut a little bit at around 460, which is kind of like the muddy area in the upper low register. But see how subtle it is? It is minus 2.7 dBs. And then I brought up just a tiny bit, 0.7 dBs at around 6,500. Just trying to enhance just a tiny bit and adding a little bit of brightness in that range, which is 0.7, you can do a little, more, a little bit more, but I found that I didn't need more for that specific sample. I'll exaggerate this a little bit more so you can see the effect. So this is without, with, All right, now that would be too much. So one more time. This is what's making the biggest change. This, like, even if I bypass this one, see the difference here? So without. So that's it for the highest strings. Now let's go to the lowest strings. For the lowest strings, what we want to do is two things, especially for this type of staccato, lowest strings in a piece like this, it's kind of like action. We want to do two things. First, get rid of the muddiness in the mid, low end, and two, add a little bit of power and aggression. So number one, how do we get rid of that muddiness in the mid, low range? So for this specific sample, I use two plugins. First, a little bit of analog saturation to add that aggression. So without, with, with very subtle but meaningful. If you listen closely, you'll hear it's a little bit more open kind of sound and it adds a little bit of a nice quality and aggression to the sound in a very subtle way. But the most important and most noticeable change is with this EQ. This is the API 550B from Waves. And basically I cut a little bit at 240, 2 dBs and a 100, 2 dBs. This is the most important one in my opinion. This is where the muddy area is. In fact, I'm gonna bring this back to zero. So I'm just gonna be using this one just for demonstration now. So without, with, let's just start by past. You can see how when I activate the plugin, when it's not bypassed, it actually sounds a little bit a little bit thinner and you may think, well, that's not what I want. I do not want a thinner sound. It's actually a good type of thinner sound. It's a thin sound that's gonna help the mid low range of the orchestra sound less muddy and we're gonna gain clarity in that area. That's very complicated, that mid low range. And then we have a cut of two dBs, it's a shelf starting at 100 it cleans that low area a little bit more start by past this is actually way more noticeable and here's the thing that I was confused at the beginning. I used to think, well, the lowest strings, like the cellos and double basses, I need to 
bring up those low frequencies. Now, th these are actually not the low instruments of the orchestra, especially in a track like this, where I've got um, the Grand Casa, the Soup Bomb, we've got kicks and hits, and with all these other sounds that are way lower than this, and we need to create the space actually for those other instruments. So do not bring, don't make the double bass sound lower than, especially in a track like this where you also have percussion and synths and all other instruments that have more power in that low end. All right, end of the story. Did I make it two minutes? I guess we'll find out when we edit it. No, more than two minutes. I guess it's time to go. See you tomorrow. Bye. Wow!